Andy Bailey seems to think that the Chicago Bulls should be looking to move Lonzo Ball's contract instead of waiting on him to return to basketball. We're going to talk about that. Plus, we're going to talk about Kobe White finding his voice in the locker room and what is the biggest nightmare for the Chicago Bulls this upcoming season. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And first up, I do want to talk about this article from uh, Andy Bailey, in which he talked about the Chicago Bulls needing to consider moving off Alonzo Ball's contract. Direct quotes from that article is this. As sad as it is to acknowledge, he's mostly question mark at the point guard, which is hard on the Chicago Bulls as well. He's their third highest paid player and has $21.4 million player option for 2024-25. If he returns to 85 to 90 percent of his healthy self for that campaign, great. But the Bulls can't bank on that. Instead of the trio of DeMar, Zach and Vooch have uh, the Bulls in the playoff hunt, they probably need to see if they can get back what they can get back for Lonzo Ball's contract as a salary filler. Now. Here's the thing, right? You know, I even talked about it this offseason when, you know, the Drew Holiday and other kind of potential trades came up saying that the Bulls, if they can look use Lonzo Ball's contract for that. And I do think that at the point where the Bulls currently are right now, if you can get a player back that you're for sure is going to be 100% healthy that can help up the ceiling of this team and the team is willing to take Lonzo Ball's contract back for it, I think you have to explore that option. Now, in the perfect world, Lonzo Ball comes back 100% healthy. He's ready to go. The Bulls get back rocking and rolling. We already know he is the perfect point guard next to Zach Levine, and I don't use that word lightly. I truly feel he is the perfect, absolute perfect point guard next to Zach Levine. We saw Zach Levine's defensive rating being better, his efficiency being better, the team rocking and rolling a little bit better. Uh, when Lonzo Ball was out there with Zach Levine, and I really do feel like that. Is Lonzo Ball a star-level player? No, but he has that type of impact specifically for this team and what the makeup of the team was and the deficiencies of this team. Now, with that being said, how much can you be willing to bet on what Lonzo Ball is going to be when he comes back to the NBA, right? And that is the question that the Bulls have to ask themselves is if they're willing to wait and if they feel confident that Lonzo Ball is going to be ready to go. Let's keep in mind, there are some serious doubts where the Lonzo Ball fans want to admit it or not. There are doubts about if Lonzo's even going to be able to get back on the basketball court. But let's say, let's eliminate that doubt, right? Let's just eliminate that. Let's say that Lonzo is going to get back. This next season goes, he has that full season of rehab. He's rocking and rolling. Next offseason, we're seeing Lonzo Ball in training camp. We're seeing him go. Then you have to ask yourself, how much of Lonzo is he going to be able to get back to right away? And we've seen it, right? It, there's some time that it takes for a player when they're missing out on basketball for two and a half seasons, Lonzo would have missed out by the time he returns theoretically next season. It takes some time for players to go. Now, Lonzo Ball's game isn't strictly based off athleticism. Now, I would say cutting, especially laterally, with the defense that he's able to play, those absolutely play a part in it. And when you look at a surgically reconstructed knee, right, with, with cadaver uh, cartilage in his knee, there's some concerns on what he's gonna, how quickly he's going to be able to come back. And that's, like I said, if we're eliminating just the reali- realistic possibility that he's not that he's not going to be able to get back on the court. We're just eliminating that for the nature of this conversation. So I think that if the Bulls, it depends on what level of player they're getting back. Should they just move, look to move Lonzo's contract just to move it for any type of deal? No, because then at that point you're bringing back $20 million worth of salary unless it's for an expiring deal and then you don't have to worry about the player option, right? But, you know, those are all ifs, ands, and buts. And you know, that is, as a GM, you have to play those percentages and try to figure that out. I've always said, I do not envy the position that AK and Eversley are in when it comes to the Lonzo Ball part of it, because I know that they believe in Lonzo Ball, and, I, and they brought him to this team for a reason, and when he was here, it was working, right? We could talk about the, the how much it would have continued working as far as them being the number one team in the East, but it was working, right? And I'm sure that they have seen this guy and what he's gone through, and listen, He's your guy. You brought him in. He was one of your first big free agent acquisitions was Lonzo Ball, right? So much so that we got him on the first day of free agency, right? It, a, a, a couple of minutes after free agency opened at that. So you have to play those percentages. But I will say, like, when you're surveying things around the NBA, 
right? And as we get closer to the trade deadline, if a team, and specifically in this, I want to say uh, in this article he, he pointed out, a team concerned with ping pong balls in the lottery more than wins in the standings may be willing to send a difference maker to the Bulls for ball and a draft asset. Now, that is where you start having to get into just the realities of it, the business part of basketball. Because if somebody's willing to send you a difference maker and a draft asset for Lonzo Ball, right? Or you're saying that Lonzo Ball and you, the Bulls, have to send out a draft asset, which then you got to try to play. But it really comes down to what this team is. If this version of the Chicago Bulls is rocking and rolling, let's say that we come in this year, we're exceeding expectations, we're, we're five to ten games above 500, leading into the trade deadline, and AK looks and says to Jerry Reinsdorf, hey, this may be, we, we, he said it in the media day, we have to make sure that this is the group worth it, right? Worth going into the luxury tax. And let's say this team performs to a level where he's willing to go to Jerry and say, we think that this may be the team. Then, hey, you, of course you, you explore your other options. You still have your disabled player exception, things like that. But if it comes down to it, I do think the Bulls should be open. I'm not saying that they should be shopping Lonzo Ball's contract, but they should be open to it depending on how it can realistically improve the team. And that is something that, hey, I just got to hear from you guys and what you guys feel on that one on. Please let me know what you guys think on all that down below. Let's move into the next topic. Kobe White, and I posted a clip uh, to the shorts uh, yesterday with Kobe White just talking about just how his, his maturity and how it's going. Matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and play the clip now. Grew into it, I think. It, it started last year. Um, um, you kind of, as being a young guy, like last year, like I'm only 23 and last year I was 22, kind of like um, you fall into this thing of like, well, I'm young, you know, especially on a team full of, like our team that's full of guys older that has won, that's been in the playoffs a bunch of times, ACs being a champion, you know, like guys like playing with guys like that. Um, it's kind of like you kind of get that mindset of like, well, you know, they have more experience than me. They, they know more than me or, you know, my opinion doesn't matter. My voice doesn't matter. But I feel like last year um, I didn't really know the type of like, you know, how much guys like respected my opinion until last year. Um, and my connection with every guy on the team. And so, like, it kind of started last year, and then it's just carried it more even – I'm off of It's carried more even um, this year. So um, I'm just continuing to grow into it, um, continuing to get better at it. Um, and it, it's starting to – it really feels natural for me, um, you know, at this point. And that's Kobe White just talking about his maturity, his growth, his understanding, all of that. And like I said, at least in one, in one basketball game, we saw what seemed like that. Now, he wasn't playing against a starting level point guard by any stretch of the imagination, so we got to see how that's going to continue to grow. Billy Donovan has already said that the starting lineup is not locked in yet either, so even Billy wants to see like different matchups and things. I'm sure we're going to get to see Javon Carter out there, but Kobe White's maturity and growth on this basketball team is something that you want to see. When you draft a guy, I know we like to think, oh, year one, uh, we're going to show some flashes. Year two, we're going to extend on that. By year three, we're going to absolutely know what we have in this guy. And the progression isn't always linear, right? Kobe White's still, what, 23 years old, still has tons of time theoretically left ahead of him in the NBA. And regardless of if he becomes a starter or not this season, whatever it is, Kobe White is going to be a big part of the Chicago Bulls rotation. And it's good to see a player finally for the Chicago Bulls really grow here in Chicago, right? Grow and develop, right? Really that maturity that we're seeing from him in the mental aspect of the game and even in how he's conducting himself. Yeah, he still plays the joke on on Zach Levine and stuff in media day, and that's all good. That's that's teamwork. That's all those type of things. But like seeing how Kobe White, where he was when he we drafted him to where he is now, even if you just look at how he's developed, right, with his body, right, and just being clearly a more, you know, a, a more solid player and just able to understand uh, to with uh, to withstand the rigors of the NBA a little bit more. And that's why you're seeing like him be an even better defensive player than what he was at any point here in Chicago. The mental aspect of his game, the physical aspect of his game. I always say with players, the best you get from players is when that mental aspect and the physical aspect of the game is kind of even out and they're around the peak at the same time. And if you can get that, some players, their mental peak comes when they're starting to decline. That just happens, right? But if you can get those things to kind of overlap some for a few years there, you're going to get a hell of a player. And so with Kobe and us locking him in, basically leading into his prime, hopefully the Bulls get that. And Kobe seems primed for that growth, right? And he seems ready. Even talking about his point guard skills, talking about how he, how he needs to run the show. These are things we did not see from Kobe White when he came in initially as our starting point guard. And we're starting to see those things develop from him now. And for me, it's a revelation. It's great to see. 
Um, and again, I would have loved to see, you know, if Lonzo was fully healthy and just to be able to see because him and, you know, Lonzo would be able to see them out on the court some together as well, right? I think would help a lot. So ultimately, Kobe White's growth this season is going to be one of the biggest things. And we've talked about that along with the growth of Patrick Williams. If both these players grow to the way that it seemed like they're starting to transition into, albeit based off one preseason game, but if that becomes something legit for this team, and that does not mean they're not going to have bad stretches, right? I hate sometimes when we say, hey, players are growing, and someone's like, oh, well, listen, they, just, they suck for the last five games. They're going to go through bad stretches. But at least at this point now, those bad stretches of Kobe, I can, I, I'm, I'm more so trust if those come, that he's going to come out of them, whether it be defense, whether it be playmaking, wh- whatever it is, even if that shot isn't falling. But I tell you, if Kobe's shot is falling on top of that and he's learning to pick his spots better and be a more efficient scorer on top of that, this is going to be a year of seeing Kobe White have the type of season that we've wanted to see from Kobe for so long. And I'm, and I'm just, I'm happy and proud of Kobe, right? Uh, for what it is for a podcaster sitting in my studio talking about basketball. I'm just glad to see the person that Kobe White's becoming and that basketball player that he's developing into as well. It's going to be a big one for the Chicago Bulls, but let me know what you guys, uh, let me know what you guys think down below. But before we go, right, Bleach Report had this article on nightmare scenarios for each team. I'm going to go over what they had as a nightmare scenario for the Chicago Bulls. And then I'm going to kind of talk about what my nightmare scenario is for the Bulls. So they had it down as the Bulls tie themselves to the trade mill of mediocrity. That's the way that they titled it, right? And the, and the main part of this article is kind of built around, you know, the, the fact that the Bulls have talent on this team, right? But it's time for a teardown. Exactly what they said. They said, will this front office finally accept that it's time for a teardown? Or will it continue investing resources in Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, and the supporting cast? And here's what I'll say on that, right? I know that's a common thing with some Bulls fans. It's a common thing with the media is that the Bulls tying themselves to this core, which two out of the, the, the three of the core are already locked in for multiple years, and they're not planning on moving those guys anytime soon. So the way that I took this article is basically them saying, are the Bulls going to extend DeMar DeRozan and further tie themselves to this career? Maybe that's not what the, the writer meant on it, but in reading it, that's what I'm taking from it. And here's the thing. I know we talked about yesterday, should the Bulls extend DeMar DeRozan or not as far as a max level contract? I think that they should. The max, that's where if it gets to the full max at the full years, that's when I think you're starting to get into an area where it makes me a little bit concerned as a Bulls fan, just being honest, right? But I will say this, is that this Chicago Bulls team has potential. This Chicago Bulls team, I don't think, and it depends on how the young people develop over this course of the season. And that, that, my friends, is what I think the biggest nightmare scenario is for the Chicago Bulls this upcoming season. Is if Kobe, Patrick Williams, Daylon, Julian Phillips, uh, Adama Sinago, uh, Justin Lewis, Arnold Lott-Bidham, all of these guys, if all of these guys do not show a, a, at least a path to where you can see them consistently being a big part of the Chicago Bulls' future this year, that is the worst scenario possible for the Chicago Bulls. I don't think I mentioned Dale and Terry as well. To me, you want to see progression out of all those players. But specifically, you want to see a step to a leap from at least two of them. And if Julian Phillips shows, A, the defense, the energy, the rebounding, that's a legit skill set. Okay, you could take that as well, right? If Dale and Terry by the end of the season shows, no, we can play Dale because, listen, Dalen's figured out a way to stop the turnovers. He's figured out a way to stop the fouls. He's given us some really, really good defense with good solid transition passing. We'll work on his offense later. That's uh, that's something that you want to see. If Adama Sinago shows, hey, we think we can get this guy adjusted to the NBA style of game, right? Same with Arnold Lott Bidham. Cool. If in Julian Phillips and Justin Lewis, you see potential for these guys to at least be role players at some time. Star, star level talent, that comes with time. We'll see that. I doubt that, especially from either one of these players, but you just never know, right? But to me, the biggest nightmare scenario for the Chicago Bulls this season is that they come in and none of the young guys answer any questions for them. That is the nightmare scenario because DeMar Vooch and, and Zach, you know what you're getting from them basically at this point in time, right? Javon Carter, Torrey Craig, even if you miss on them, they're veterans, not really the huge deals, but even then I think you trust on them and their ability to be role players. But the young guys, right, the guys that you kind of need, the next guard of the Chicago Bulls, not guard as in guard, shooting guard or point guard, but then the next set of players that you really want to start being able to be pieces of, of, of what you have going forward. If none of these guys show that, right, and they all basically stay the same as they were last season or, God forbid, regress, and especially in you know, some, some players' instances, 
that is the worst case scenario for the Chicago Bulls to me. And that is a place where you get into where if you don't have a future, if you don't have at least one to two of these guys where you're looking at and saying, regardless of what we do with that core three, regardless of what we do around, we know that Kobe and Pat or whoever else it is, Kobe and Dalen, Kobe and, and Julian, Julian and Pat, whoever it is, right? Any combination of those two, to me, you want to walk away from this season seeing those guys as being parts of what you're building as far as you can bet on what they're going to be. Not just, and that's not to say that they have to be the finished products either, right? You still, it's still going to be some potential laden in that, but you want to see them take a step. And I think that that would be the worst case scenario for the Chicago Bulls this season is that if none of those young players make the necessary or needed steps in their development, and then you're still looking at your player development staff like, hey, we got you some guys. Let's see what you get out of them, right? You more so want to go into the next offseason, things like that, and looking at that player development staff and saying, listen, Kobe and Pat had a hell of a season. Pat was more aggressive. That shot, we still need to get that release a little bit quicker. Can you work on him with that? Kobe, the defense was good. The offense was maybe still a little bit inconsistent, but he was our starting point guard. We never thought about taking him out. Whatever it is, you want those young players to start showing some things. And to me, that would be the worst case scenario for the Chicago Bulls is if your future is still filled with a bunch of question marks with no solid answers yet at that point, right? The Chicago Bulls have their own first round pick this year. So regardless of if the season goes good or bad, hopefully, you know, they're, they're doing their due diligence. They're going to draft well, whatever it is. They got one more first round pick owed out. After that, they own all their first round picks. But if you don't have a foundation of players that you think are part of your future, that is where that, that even those draft picks start getting a little murky, where you may be comfortable with a team that sneaks into the playoffs and you have a right outside the lottery pick and you're thinking, hey, we should still get great talent out of that. You don't want to go into this saying, hey, we're also, we're making the playoffs, but we don't even know what these young guys are, right? That's what you want for this team, and that's what I think would be the biggest nightmare scenario for the Chicago Bulls. But, hey, let me know what you guys think down below. I want to hear from you guys. What, in your opinion, is the worst-case scenario for the Chicago Bulls in this season If we to say that we came out of the season? Is it coming out of the season, missing the play-in? Whatever it is for you, I want to hear from you guys down below on that one. But that's my time for today. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. 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 Media.